Well, we're back at Ellen Road, and what a fantastic feeling that is as well, because it's been too long. But the countdown is very much underway now to the resumption of the championship season. That's why I'm back here as we begin to look forward to what lies ahead for Leeds United across the course of the remaining weeks and the final nine games. Delighted to say we've got two former Leeds United players to discuss what lies ahead, Ben Parker and Tony DiRigo. Thanks very much for joining us, chaps. So we begin again with Cardiff away at lunchtime on Sunday, but what about where we're at now? What are your expectations and hopes about the level of the Leeds players' fitness, their preparedness? Ben, what, what do you think's been going on away from here? Well, all the kind of correct noise, correct um, feeling coming away from Four Parch is that the players are fitter than ever somehow. I'd, I'd like to ask how they kind of resisted the urge from the, the chocolate kind of sweet bar <laughs> at, at home because being in lockdown, as we know, it's, uh, it's been very difficult, but the mindset of the players and the, the end goal must have been such a big motivation for them to, to carry on the training programme, doing the weights every day, sending them in. And you can just imagine the, the buzz amongst the players when they got back to Four Parch, getting amongst the, the training, amongst the boys again. And the, the game on Sunday, the, the anticipation's building massively. And I, I'm excited, so I can't, can't imagine what the, the, the boys and the players are feeling like. Yeah, how have they done it, Tony? How have they stayed so focused over such a long period of time when they didn't even know if they'd be coming back, never mind when they'd be coming back? Mm. I've got to say, it must be very difficult for them, but it has been uh, really impressive the way that uh, their mentality through the whole season, you know, so far uh, has been very good. They hit a bad patch, of course, and then came back uh, really strong, uh, clean sheets the next five or six. So I think they've got uh, certainly uh, some metal about them now. Uh, I know they'd be eager to put things right, what happened in you know, the last five, six games of last season. Uh, let's be honest as well, they're top of the table. They're absolutely flying. Uh, you know, why wouldn't you give it absolutely everything? But I just think the group is so solid, you know, from Bielsa down. You know, the players, the management, every single uh, one just wants to get out there and play again. You know, there was no shirking. There was no excuses. There was no, you know, reasoning that we didn't want the, the season to continue. Uh, that come from other teams, QPR, etc. But nothing from Leeds United. All they wanted to do was get out on that pitch. And I can see exactly why, because to experience... That, those last nine games, I think, is vital. And fans, unfortunately, you know, they're not going to be able to to feel that because you know it would be and is hopefully going to be very, very special. But for players, uh, I think exactly the same. They have to put the ghosts of last season to bed and uh, and play them out. And they're fit and raring to go. And I think I've talked to probably a player a, a week, and my goodness, they're all chomping at the bit. They're like they've been eating red meat for God's sake. You know, they want to get out there and get started. And and you're right, Ben. Same with me. I can't wait for it to get going. Ben, do you think in a way that Marcelo Bielsa, well, we hope this is correct, is the ideal man to have in charge at a time like this? Because he will look on this as another type of challenge, as an exciting, interesting, new thing that you have to deal with. They've been planning, obviously, well in advance. They were, they were planning for this in January. They could see what was coming. So, in a sense, is he the right guy to have in charge at what has been a time of crisis um, to all intents and purposes? Oh, 100 percent. And if, we, if we're looking at to this first two free fixtures in particular, I think fitness is going to be a massive thing. Then no one really knows what form. There's been a short kind of turnaround from full contact training to the first game. So fitness is going to be key. And we all know the methods and the, uh, the training kind of regime Marcel Bielsa has put, put in from first day since he took over the job. The players are the, the, the fittest team, certainly in our division, if not the, the whole country. And like I said, it will, be, it will be another challenge because it's something that no one's ever experienced before. And we all know the manager, he never leaves a stone unturned. And he'll be plot, plotting away through, through these games, through these fixtures. Even the simple things of the travel arrangements going down to Cardiff on a, on a Sunday 12 o'clock kickoff. Oh, this will come into a, a massive effect. And this is where the, um, you'll get the good managers separated from the great ones. They'll, um, they'll be so, so planned about everything they do. And that'll go into the players as well. So it'll be interesting to see how we go about things. But one thing I am certain, the fitness levels won't be an issue whatsoever. And it's the old cliche, they'll be running through brick walls, they'll be going for 90 plus minutes. I can't see that being a problem. 
Um, but yeah, it's, got, it's, got, it's a good challenge to kind of witness, for, especially for us three anyway. Tony, everybody has a ritual and a routine about their match day, the build up to a game. People like to put all those things that are in place on a regular basis. That isn't really, uh, you're not able to do that for this, are you? Because there are so many uh, imponderables in terms of what lies ahead in this one. The, the transport and the travel that Ben's just talked about there, that presents a challenge. Then you've got the empty stadium, another challenge. And the type of game that you play, the number of replacements, there are lots of changes that you, everybody's having to contend with very suddenly. Yeah, you're right. Um, and the word superstition needs to go out the window as well, because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, some of the boys I played with, the things that they, you know, had to do is just plainly ridiculous. And uh, I was never one for that. You know, you need to be flexible and be ready for anything. And I think uh, this team is, you know, has got that, that. There's absolutely no doubt. But you're right. They need to take whatever comes at them. And one of the biggest things, of course, we know is going to be, uh, you know, playing in front of no crowd. Uh, that, that's the, the obvious one. And, and that's going to be uh, very different. Uh, I'm sure, you know, Ben's done it. I've done it before. Uh, it's not a pleasant experience because you, you simply want to play, you know, in front of those, uh, you know, thousands of fans that, that, that get your adrenaline going. But what I would say is if anyone's watched uh, Killer Ball in training, there's no crowd there. And I tell you what, they go like the clappers. So, so they know what it's all about. And the prize is huge. The prize is absolutely gigantic. So that will always be in the front of the boys' minds. Yeah, how, how do you contend with that, Ben? Nobody in the stadium. Where, where does your motivation come from in a situation like that? I, I thought about this quite a lot, Bryn, and it's obviously that tone today. It's going to be strange. It's an experience that the boys haven't probably done since playing reserve football back, back in the day. But it's the competitive edge. As soon as you cross that white line, and ask Tony, ask, ask any ex-professional footballer, the, um, it's the competitiveness. It doesn't matter if it's a game of tiddlywinks or a, a massive game of football to get promoted to the Premier League. The players will want to win. It's the, like I said, the competitive edge kicks in. Um, yeah, it's going to be difficult with, 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 without the fans, but I just think that'll just go to the back of their mind straight away as soon as that, as soon as that whistle's blowing. And the tone is alluded to there. They've done plenty of the, the murder ball sessions, so relatively speaking, the, um, the actual game should be quite easy. <laughs> the, uh, the way it's set up, Five at home for Leeds, four away. In normal times, you'd say big advantage to having more games at home than away. In this instance, though, the experience, at least from Bundesliga coming back and playing again, is that the away team stats have been better than the home team stats. Does that tell us anything? Should we read anything into that, Tony? Uh, I think we should, and you're exactly right. I would have mentioned that as well, because I think at the first 35, 36 Bundesliga home games, only seven or eight wins at home, which is an incredible stat. It's the completely the wrong way around. And, and I suppose if you're looking at a team coming to Ellen Road, uh, they'll be delighted that there's no crowd. You know, I, I think absolutely. So for them, it'll be a mental plus, but you know, they're not playing the crowd. They're playing 11 white shirts and that's where their problem's gonna start. So I, I don't see our boys being affected by that, but I certainly feel the opposition coming to Ellen Road won't be you know, intimidated like they might have been. And they'll start full guns blazing, but again, I just wonder certain sides, you know, how much of a stomach for the fight will they have? Those, those mid-table sides, uh, they might last 10, 15, 20 minutes, half an hour. They're not going to last 95 minutes like Leeds United are going to. Ben, it, I mean, people have talked about it being, because of the no atmosphere, being like a training ground game in effect. You know, you wouldn't even have to necessarily play these matches at the stadium if you guarantee that nobody was going to come and watch. Will that be the case or not? Or does something in the professionals' makeup mean that that won't happen? Well, that, that, that's what you're hoping, aren't you? <laughs> the, um, you're, you're hoping the players aren't going to be able to hear your voice, but in mind, yours, Tony, whoever's doing the, the, the commentary from, from, from the gantry area. But um, it's going to be such a strange experience for, for everyone involved, the, the broadcasters, the players, the staff. Um, it's, an, it's a new experience that we're going to have to adapt pretty quickly. And the, the good thing that we've um, done throughout the course of the season, we've, we've had no excuses. We've never blamed it on something else if we haven't performed on the day. And, that, and, and that's, what, that's what we're going to. And Tony touched on a great point earlier about the, the style of lockdown when we've always said we want to play the games. The hunger and the drive has always been there from the club to go out and play the games. So regardless if there's no fans, if there's, uh, there's no ball boys, no ball girls to let the, throw the balls in. So there's all these kind of different things that's going to happen. But 
end of the day, I know full, full, full well the way the boys have been training, they'll be geared up and fully prepared for, for what's going to come in these nine games. OK, so what is going to come in these nine games? Cardiff up first. It's just about looking at the fixtures that Leeds have beyond that. I'd say the hardest is first. Would that be right? Cardiff with a really good home record. They've won eight, drawn eight, lost two in front of their own fans. Not the case in this one, of course. Um, they haven't lost many this season and they have that little thing over Leeds United anyway in terms of the league record. So is this the toughest place that Leeds could start? Yeah, it's not an easy place to start, you know, absolutely. Um, I think um, first game back as well, you know, of course they're going to be very excited and up for it. They've got a chance of, uh, you know, getting into the um, playoffs as well. So, yeah, it's going to be a, a tough game. That is absolutely no doubt. But, you know, I wouldn't expect anything less, for goodness sake. You know, the, all the teams have uh, had now a period that um, they've missed football. You know, greater things have happened in life. But finally, they get the opportunity to do what they love again. So it's going to be all guns blazing. Um, what was interesting as well, I managed to do a game. I commentated on a game before lockdown and uh, it was behind closed doors uh, and it was Juventus into Milan in City R. So it's the biggest game of the season in City R with no fans. And I'm like everyone else thinking, what's it going to be like, you know? And the atmosphere, there wasn't any and it was really strange. But the lads of both sides, the players were fantastic. The tempo they played at, but just because there was no crowd, it sensed like we were talking about a training game. Well, it, at times it was like that, but I looked at all the stats afterwards and it was exactly the same as a normal game. You know, the distances ran, the sprints, everything was the same, but you, you lose that bit of atmosphere. So I think that's what we're going to have to get used to, I suppose, when we commentate on these games. The tempo and pace, I do think, will still be there. I honestly think Leeds United, you know, on a Sunday in a park, they'll play the same tempo. It doesn't matter where they play, you know what you're going to get. It's going to be all action all the time. So, um, Cardiff have Tomlin now back, it would appear, fit again. He wouldn't have played at this game, been staged when it was meant to be staged because he was injured at that stage. Mendes Lang, same situation with him. Two important players, potentially. Tomlin in particular, as we saw in the game at Ellen Road, who, who really dragged the seat, his side back into a game that they were completely out of, being played off the park, and they ended up with a draw, of course. So, is, that a, is there an element of regret there, or can you not really wonder about who is and who isn't going to be playing at this stage after this long break? I, I think there's, there's pros and cons to it, Bryn. You can, you can look at that aspect where opposition players are going to be available now. Mm. Just touching about the, the free free game earlier in the season, that seems such a long, long time ago now. It seems like a different year, different decades almost. But no, Tom, Tomlin will be a threat. They've got some other threat threats in the team, but they'll be looking at our players. Our players will be refreshed after that kind of mental break from training day to day. And um, we, we know it's difficult. We know the manager puts them through the paces on a day to day basis. So for our players to have that man mental break just away from it all, albeit keeping on top of the fitness, I think that'll be a massive, massive advantage for us just to um, break down these nine games. It's, it's the old cliche, what the, what the players will come out one game at a time, rightly so, but I think they'll be looking, trying to point to little blocks because after, after obviously Cardiff, we've got Fulham, which is another massive game for us. It's about how we start. So yeah, there's pros and cons for teams, having players back fit, um, get, getting a full squad, but so are we, we're, we're mentally refreshed, we're, we're fit, we're strong, and we'll be bouncing into these games. Cardiff away then, the two home games to come, Tony. These first three matches, almost in effect, you feel could shape the tone and the mood and the atmosphere of what comes after, couldn't they? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it, it is like a, um, a start of a new season. Uh, I do think always at the start, uh, Leeds are the best prepared side, so there's no problems there. But getting off to a flyer is always pretty important. But, you know, the players, I'm sure, understand. They are seven points clear of that third side. They're, they're looking, you know, very good. That confidence still you know, is there and should be behind them. And the determination from, as I say, just to put things right, to have the opportunity to put things right from last season, I think is such a big, big thing. And the teams you're talking about, yeah, they're all fighting for different reasons, but, you know, you just got to look over the course of the season so far, you know, 30 odd games, Leeds have been the best side. So there's no way that the lads should be going into these games thinking anything other than going out there, giving their best, and that will get the job done. You know, if you want to look at, excuses of this player is going to play that player. You can find them all. 
no excuses. There aren't, you know, I'm, and I'm sure the lads aren't thinking of anything like that. It's get out there and play that game. And Ben's right, you know, one game at a time and that they'll be ready. And the, the run of fixtures that lie ahead in these next games doesn't offer an excuse either, does it really? Because as it stands at the moment, I think Fulham are the only side in the top six that Leeds have still to play. So it's kind of, it, it, there is a path there, isn't there, that we can identify here potentially? Yeah, there is. And I think that, that's, what, that's why it's key to, to get off to a quick and fast start because we know the games, especially when we get into the second game, it's Saturday midweek, Saturday midweekend. Before you know it, a blink of an eye, the, the, the season will be finished. So to get off to that fast start will be so, so vital. And what Tony said earlier would be a really interesting point. Some of the teams, when we come up against, we all know it's, it's their cup final when we, we roll into, into town. They get the highest attendance of, of the season as well. So for opposition teams not to have that as well, we spoke about the, the, the fans at Ellen Road. Yeah, they are the 12th, 12th man. They do drag us over the line in, in quite a lot of the games. But going to opposition grounds, we also spoke about what happens, what's happened in the Bundesliga. I think the teams, will they be up for it as well? Because they, they do rely on the... the the big crowd when Leeds roll into town, so hopefully that can play into a favour for us. But I think it's all about a fast start. Get get off to a flyer down at Cardiff, and that should see you through into into kind of getting a bit of a rhythm. Tony, the last time we were all gathered together to do one of these, we were actually in each other's presence at that time because that was in a different world. Here at Ellen Road, we talked before the season began about what your hopes and aspirations were and ambitions were in terms of the of the season. You two guys spoke, rightly so, very optimistically. But we had another chat after that where one or two concerns were expressed about whether the squad was going to be strong enough. You know, we didn't know anything about this guy called Ben White who'd been brought in. Was he going to be up to championship standard? It's quite good that we're having a conversation now, nine games from the end, with Leeds top and seven points clear, isn't it? Where the main focus is, can Leeds United get over the line and get promoted? Yeah, absolutely. I think that conversation that we had off camera, um, <laughs> you seem to be the one that has a glass half empty brin, I have to say. But That's anyway, me all over. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But uh, you're right. And I looked at the squad and I'm thinking, well, you know what? Centre half concerns me. Uh, you know, maybe we need another one. Uh, ben White has been incredible. Uh, but one player in particular, there's been lots of players that I don't like to single people out, but one in particular uh, has kind of fixed many, many different positions, and that's Stuart Dallas. Mm. I think he has been absolutely fantastic. Wherever he's been asked to play, he has been tremendous. The last six games of last season, I think he came to the fore and mentally was probably our strongest player in that period. And he's having a, a, a wonderful season. So, you know, we should listen to Marcelo because he wants to have players that can play in different areas. Uh, and in Stuart Dallas, he's got, you know, exactly that. But uh, did I think we'd be doing what we're doing? Um, I'd certainly hoped that we, we could because you could see the signs last season, but we were mentally fragile, let's be honest. The last five, six games, you know, we didn't uh, do what we needed to do. I'm looking at this season now, and you mentioned seven points. I can easily think of little instances where we could be 12, yeah, 15 yeah. ahead. And, I, and, I, and I'm not just saying that, I really honestly believe that. Uh, I looked at, we've seen all the teams now, haven't we, that we're up against this season. Only one comes anywhere near us, and that's West Brom. Well, that was an excellent game now at Ellen Road. They're, they're a very good side. After that, I don't see anyone close to us. So put all that together, you know, we should have confidence. But uh, I should have listened to Marcelo at the start, <laughs> shouldn't I? <laughs> in Bielsa, we trust Ben. That's, he had a plan. He's put a plan in place that the players, as Tony said, suggested there, maybe took a little bit of a while because it was a very different way of working. And then particularly in the, in the final few weeks of last season, the critical few weeks, there was a little bit of fragility there. I think that's one thing we've seen in, in abundance this season, isn't it? Mental strength, because there have been setbacks this season as well. Well, we've, we've all been involved in football long enough now to kind of realise the um, how long it kind of takes to bounce back from a heartbreak that, that we had. And the, the way the last season finished as well, it must have played on the boys' minds throughout the course of their summer holidays, coming back into pre-season. But... I have to say, from basically the first day of pre-season, all the, the noise and the talk coming out from the players and the manager, um, Angus Kinnear, the, the owner, Andrea as well, was so steely focused about getting the job done. And I think that's why we spoke about at the start of the season, about having that kind of confidence. 
yeah, there's always that thing in the back of your mind, but can we do it? And full credit to the players to actually go out and put all the demons and the horror story from last season to kind of park it to one side and just be so relentless in the in the training, in the in the performances on match days, just to like so said, just brush teams aside and just to be at the top of the table, seven points clear with nine games to go, full testament to to all the players and look the the job's not done, is there's still there's still a long way to go. But to to have that mental kind of strength w- within the squad, it gives me confidence coming into, into this run of fixtures. And Tony, we lost two Leeds United legends in the in the period of time that we've all been away. Two players who graced this turf by which I sit now in Norman Hunter and Trevor Cherry. It would be a very, very fitting tribute to those two people if the Leeds United lads could could do the job that needs doing now, wouldn't it? You're absolutely right. And two wonderful, wonderful men. Um, and I got to know them more and more in the last few years uh, as well. And uh, we're going to miss them greatly. Uh, and if you think that the Leeds United and the status that the club has got around the world now, it's those guys that made it. You know, we've been very fortunate to enjoy the fruits of what's come afterwards. But those guys, you know, that great Leeds team that they had, um, they built it for us. Uh, yeah, and we, we want to get back there. We, we really do. We've tried for the last 15 odd, 16 seasons now, but fingers crossed we can because uh, we certainly deserve to. And those guys, you know, played a huge part uh, in this club. And uh, let's get better back to where we belong. So come on, fellas. Let's do it for Trevor, let's do it for Norman, let's do it for Leeds United. Nine games to go, it all starts at Cardiff City on Sunday lunchtime. Join us on LUTV for all the build-up and all the coverage.